Hey fifth graders, my name is Miss Rose and today we're going to take a crash course lesson in the compromises of the Constitutional Convention. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1787, 55 delegates came together to talk about how the United States is going to be governed. This convention lasted four months. It's not your average party. The Constitutional Convention at the end became one of the most important documents in the United States history. Guess what it was? The United States Constitution. How funny is that? So at the Constitutional Convention, the delegates tried to figure out how they were going to take care of themselves now that they were not underneath the British rule anymore. So they had to come up with a new government and the new government had to have representatives. They had to have people from the states. So that was an issue because Virginia, a huge state with a big population could possibly have more representatives than let's say Delaware, who was like the smallest state possible. And while they were debating this, a dude named Roger Sherman from Connecticut proposed a cool compromise, a really awesome compromise called, drum roll, the Great Compromise. The name wasn't really original, but you get it. It was a good compromise. So the Great Compromise meant that we would have a two house legislature. It was a compromise that both fit the bigger population states and the smaller population states. They compromised to meet in the middle. How cool is that? So you might be thinking, wait a second, what's a compromise? Well, I'm glad you asked. A compromise is when you have two opposing parties or two opposing people that want two different things. So like I want something and another person wants another thing. Well, we compromise to meet in the middle. So that means I give a little bit and you give a little bit. So then we had compromised to meet in the middle. So in the House of Representatives, each state would now be assigned how many representatives they get by the population. So what we talked about before was that states like Virginia would have more representatives and states like Delaware would have less representatives. In the Senate, all states would have the same number of seats. So that was our compromise. So now we have a compromise where every state has an equal vote in the Senate. That's all that really matters. It was all about money. So now that we have our compromise and we learned that how many representatives we get for each state, there was an issue on how to count the population. And that issue was on slavery. And so how do we count slaves as part of the state's population? So we go back to our state. So Virginia has a larger state population, which means they have a larger slave population. Delaware has a smaller population, so they have a smaller slave population. The larger states had more of an interest of counting their slave population, which meant that they got more money for the state. If you have a larger population, that means you get more money, remember? So Delaware, who has a smaller population, has the smaller slave population, didn't want their slave population to be counted because it wouldn't help them get money for their state. It would only hurt them in the long run rather than the bigger states with a bigger population who had more slaves. So they decided to do another compromise and they made the three-fifths compromise. So Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution includes, representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states which may be included within this union, according to their respective numbers, which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons, including those bound to service for a term of years and excluding Indians not taxed, three-fifths of all other persons. So anyone that was bound by slavery happened just to be three-fifths of a person, and that's how they were counted to get representatives for their state. So this determined how many representatives each state got. So you counted one per each free person, and then three-fifths for every slave. So now that we had a quick crash course in the compromises of the Constitutional Convention, we're gonna learn about the Great Compromise and the Three-Fifths Compromise a little bit more in depth. I'll see you on the other slides.